All right, I want to show you another tie-in here that one of the one of you viewers showed me, and I wasn't aware of it. But um, right here, I talked about my other video attacking this little liar here, the Jews and their lies, part one and two, the Jews and their lies. Remember that. Look at this book here by Martin Luther, the Jews and their lies. Hmm. On the Jews and their lies, von den Juden und ihren Lügen is what the German is there. The Jews and their lies. The Jews and their lies. Hmm. Interesting. It says here in the treatise, Luther describes Jews as a, quote, base, whoring people that is no people of God, and their boast of lineage, circumcision, and law must be accounted as filth. End of quotation. Let's look at this Israel moment number two. So-called Jews are not real Jews. This is Pastor Steven Anderson from Faith Forward Baptist Church in Tempe, Arizona. A lot of people today will tell you that the Christ-rejecting Jews are God's chosen people. They are. And uh, if you understand the Bible, you understand that they come back to their land in unbelief. That's the purpose of the time of Jacob's trouble. There would be no reason to have God pour out his wrath and his judgment on the nation of Israel if they were in belief, if they were all saved Christians. But see, replacement theology, heretics, Catholic papists like this, they don't understand that. They want to steal the promises that God gave to Israel. Let's continue. But I'm going to prove to you from Scripture that God does not even recognize them as Jews. Listen to Romans 2.28. The Bible reads, For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew that is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. So this scripture tells us clearly that he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Oh, yes, it's scripture just plainly tells us that. Oh, why don't we actually look at the context, which Stephen Anderson never does. He'll just rip a couple verses out and just say, oh, see, it proves such and such. Oh, well, why don't we look at the context? Look at verse uh, 24 here, Romans chapter 2, verse 24. Okay, this, what he's saying here, let's go down here first of all, and uh, he says here, he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly, okay? So then, whenever the Bible refers to Jews, then it's spiritual Jews. Look out for that, the Catholic Church does that. Everything is spiritualized. It's all spiritual. Let's just spiritualize the things that we can't explain and that mess up our system. We'll spiritualize it. Okay, so you have spiritual Jews here. Okay, how do you explain num verse 24? For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you as it is written. Huh? How could the name of God be blasphemed among the Gentiles through spiritual Jews? Who, what's it talking about here? Look at this, verse 25. For circumcision verily profiteth. What circumcision? See? If thou keep the law, but if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. In other words, the fact that you're Jewish, that you're one of God's chosen people, you're first of all, you're causing the name of God to be blasphemed because of your wickedness and your sin, just like the modern day Jews in Israel. So you're causing the name of God to be bla uh, blasphemed. But down, down, down here, it's saying you're, the fact that you're God's chosen people means nothing if you're a breaker of the law. See? And Paul's being sarcastic here. He's saying, For circumcision verily profiteth. It's a good thing that you're born a Jew, if thou keep the law. But they can't. See? That's why they need Jesus Christ. That's why a Jew today, if they die in their sins, they go to hell. And that's a sad thing. You know? But then it says, So in other words, your special calling here in your, your election of God as God's chosen people there, that special calling means nothing if you're a breaker of the law. You're just as good as a, a Gentile, then you're just as bad as a Gentile. You're on your way to hell, just like they are. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, righteousness which is through Jesus Christ, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? Okay, now he gets into the spiritual. See, up here he's talking about physical. Now he gets into the spiritual down in here. Okay, and shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, which is by nature, see, the the flesh there, 
a Gentile? If it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision dost transgress the law? And then he goes in and, and says he's comparing it to spiritual things. But now look at the next chapter. You say, but see, here Paul is talking about the physical Jews. Here he says there are no more physical Jews. They're just inward Jews. We're just spiritual Jews now. Oh, really? Look at the next chapter. What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Now, why would he be saying that if he's talking about saved people that are spiritual Jews now? It doesn't make any sense. Look at this. Much every way, chiefly, because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Were they spiritual Jews in the Old Testament? The uh, uh, Philistines and, and uh, everybody, you know, all the different races and kindreds of people and things, they were all spiritual Jews, the ones that, were, that had believed in Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. It's talking about the nation of Israel here, the Jewish people. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Yeah, see? Oh, see, there are some Jews that don't believe. Well, then the faith of God is made without effect. No, it doesn't work that way. Well, if, if, the, if, the, truly saved, if, if the Jews were truly, really Jews, you know, over there in Israel right now, then, you know, they should all be saved Christians. That's not at all what the Bible teaches. And again, let me go to Romans chapter 11. I'll show you this. Okay, uh, let's see here. Verse 25, Romans 11:25. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, like Stephen Anderson, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, like Stephen Anderson, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. What is this if there are no more physical Jews, any, any more Jews according to the flesh? See? And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. What's Jacob? Israel. It's the same thing there. Jacob was called Israel by God. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. Now, I know this is going to be very hard for some of Stephen Anderson's followers to, to fathom here, but Romans chapter 11 comes after chapter 2 and 3. Okay? 11 is a bigger number. You might have to look that up and do more research on that if you are stupid enough to watch Stephen Anderson. Okay? Ridiculous. And he goes on and he just keeps slamming the Jews. Here, we're not even going to waste our time on this thing. Let's go back to what Martin Luther said here. Luther wrote that they are, quote, full of the devil's feces, which they wallow in like swine. Nice, real nice. Oh, but Luther was a great hero of the Christian faith. Well, no, he was a great hero of the Catholic faith. Look at this. And the synagogue is an incorrigible whore and an evil slut. That's what Luther wrote. And this went on to be used by Adolf Hitler and the Nazi movement, by the way. This tract here. And, uh, down here it says the prevailing scholarly view since the Second World War is that the treatise exercised a major and persistent influence on Germany's attitude towards its Jewish citizens, not all the German people, by the way, in the centuries between the Reformation and the Holocaust. 400 years after it was written, the Nazis displayed on the Jews and their lies during Nuremberg rallies. They were displaying this tract that Martin Luther wrote at the rallies. That's how much they worshipped it. But now let's go to stupid Steve's uh, next Israel moment, number three. The Jewish synagogue equals the synagogue of Satan. What do we just read here? The synagogue is, quote, an incorrigible whore and an evil slut. Let's see what Stephen Anderson says. The synagogue of Satan represents, as if there's any question about it, if there's, as if there's any mystery about it. There's only one religion in the world that uses synagogues. That would be Judaism. So when God talks about the synagogue of Satan, that's clearly who he's talking about. By the way, they're the only people who go around saying we're Jews when really God says they're not. Oh, yeah. And see, and then he goes back to the, the previous bunch of nonsense that he spewed there about taking Ephesians, or excuse me, Romans chapter 2, verses 28 and 29 completely out of context. God doesn't know what he's talking about. All right. This guy is a, he's a papist. It's ridiculous. And, you know, look at the, look at the, the uh, propaganda posters. You know, I mean, look, look at this propaganda post here. 
poster here. It was put up in the Netherlands during World War II. See, see how they're making the the they're over exaggerating Jewish features, the bigger nose and things like that, and making them look like they're some kind of a, a devil, of some kind. Propaganda posters, like I showed in my other video, you know, Nazi propaganda attacking the Jews, you know, and, and some of little Stephen Anderson's followers. He's not a, you know, he's a good preacher, and you ought to listen to his, his, you know, attacking of the Jewish people. And, uh, yeah, you know why this guy's post-trib? Because he's a replacement theology Roman Catholic, posing as a independent fundamental Baptist. And this guy has ties too, by the way, to to uh, Jack Hiles' cult in Hammond, Indiana. Actually, used to live in Hammond, Hammond, Indiana, and uh, Jack Hiles was a sex pervert, by the way. He had multiple affairs and things, and, and his son was a extreme, you know, habitual fornicator. I mean, the guy with David Hiles, the guy was wicked beyond belief. Totally wicked. Jack Hiles was a, was a, oh man, guy's wicked, you know? I'm going to be bringing out some stuff on him in the future. You know, he was, he was basically sleeping with his, uh, one of his deacon's wives, built her a house and everything, paid for her divorce from her husband. Went with her, you know, took her to Hawaii and left his wife at home. That's Jack Hiles, the guy that uh, Stephen Anderson worships. You say, well, can you prove that? Let me just show you here real quick. Repentanceblacklist.com. Stephen Anderson's little propaganda, another one of his Nazi propaganda websites. You know, they're flying the Nazi collars here, black and red and white. Nothing to it, of course. But uh, there you have Jack Hiles, the pervert. And here's little Stephen Anderson with his little hero above him. You know, disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Okay? Don't listen to this guy. I mean, you know, people, again, oh, you shouldn't be so rude and crude about the guy. I'll call him things. I'm going to call this little liar names because I want to wake up some of you people. I want you to understand the fact that you are in serious, serious danger listening to this guy. I mean... Look at the look at the scriptures in Romans chapter eleven, okay. I mean, up in here, uh, verse nineteen, Romans eleven nineteen. Thou wilt say then the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in, okay. The natural branches there were broken off. Some of the Jews that did not believe were broken off from the root. The root is Israel. Salvation is of the Jews, okay. If you're saved, you have a Jewish religion. Right? And I don't mean spiritual Jews. I mean Jews according to the flesh. Right? And some of them, yeah, they don't believe. Some of the Jews over there in Israel, yes, they are wicked. Yes, there's the Kabbalah, and yes, there's all kinds of you know, evil movements and things like that. Absolutely. That's the way it's supposed to be. That's what the Bible prophesies. That's the purpose of the time of Jacob's trouble. But look at this. We were grafted in. If you're saved, if you're a Gentile, you're grafted in to that root. You are part of a Jewish faith. You have a Jewish Savior for crying out loud. Jesus was a Jew. Look at this, verse 20. Well, because of unbelief they were broken off. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, the Jews, take heed lest he also spare not thee. Behold therefore the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity but toward thee, goodness, okay? Then which fell, the Jews that were cut off, but toward thee, goodness. Look at this little word there. If thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. Now you can argue over that, whether that's a, a national thing of, of being cut off nationally, or whether that's your salvation that gets cut off. There, there's a lot of arguments either way on that whole thing. The point is, it's a negative connotation. Okay? It's a very bad thing to have God turn against you like that. You don't want that. You better be careful not to speak against the root. The root being Israel. You better be very careful. And this little Satanist right here is trying to turn you on the root. Trying to turn you against the nation of Israel. And by the way, the prophecies of the end times. You know, this little guy here always, says, oh, Matthew 24, Matthew 24 overthrows the pre-trib rapture. Okay, let's look at Matthew chapter 24 very quickly here. 
Matthew tw chapter 24, look at this. Verse 16, let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Huh? We'll see, uh, this is uh, spiritual. We'll just make that spiritual. Judea actually means Arizona, right? Mm -hmm. How about standing in the holy place? When you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. What's the holy place? Your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, Christian. How can that be the holy place? How can the Antichrist stand in your body? It doesn't work. It's the rebuilt temple in Jerusalem. And those that are in Judea are to flee into the mountains. It's about the nation of Israel. So if, it, if we're just spiritual Jews and God doesn't recognize physical Jews anymore, okay, then why are all the prophecies of these end times, the, the second coming of Christ and everything, why is it all centered around a geographic location? The nation of Israel with Jerusalem as the city where Jesus Christ comes back and rules and reigns from. See, this guy's a liar. Do not believe this guy. Get away from his ministry. Okay, people wonder, again, why are you spending your time on this guy? Because he's extremely, extremely dangerous. If I could go back to this time period, if I could go back to Germany, back there pre, before they started to put the Jews into the extermination camps and started to slaughter them, I would be doing exactly what I'm doing right now. I would be warning about people like this, Joseph Goebbels. I'd be warning people. I'd be warning the German people over there and saying, hey, don't listen to this propaganda here. This stuff is deadly, deadly dangerous. Very, very dangerous. That's why I'm doing this right now. Joseph Goebbels is alive and well today as Stephen Anderson. You say, oh, you know, reincarnation? No, no, it's the same spirit. The same spirit is indwelling Stephen Anderson. Get away from this guy.